Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, everybody. Um, today I wanted to hello, do hello. a little review of... Good morning, everybody. Let me mute myself. A little review of the, the Blender Online class that we'll be hosting um, in March. And just kind of explain what the deal is with it. What, what are we going to be doing in the class? Um, who is it for? Like, what kind of projects do we get into? So, yeah. Um, and there's a, a few common questions that come up, so I just wanted to see, um, I guess, answer those questions. And Or if you have any questions, here, we're here, we're all here, so let's uh, get into it. Hey, Didi. Hey, Marina. Hello, Sunny Shah. All right, Sonny's already in the class, so I guess Sonny can uh, <laughs> get a little preview. Um, oh yeah, and thanks for that that giant uh, potato, Dee Dee, <laughs> in the in the last stream. Um, so yeah, in this this class, where it's pretty practical. I mean, um, the the way it's structured is we'll have a new project every week. And it's it's pretty. I guess we we start off with really really basic stuff, like the first week we'll be doing a little Japan night alley. Hey Manu, hi solutions. Um, so this this is actually student work from uh, one of the guys last term, Ian, Amelling, and he did um, he did like a little photo study of this this uh, kind of moody. Japan night alley here and the, the cool thing about this class now in 2019 is we got um, blender 2.8 which means we've got all the brand new stuff like EV volumetrics um, you know this really nice soft shadowing so right off the bat on, on week one we're doing like fully rendered scenes and we're getting to play with lighting and get get those effects like, let me see if I can turn on some volume here. And it's really, I mean, it's so quickly that we can start to get into very cinematic looking scenes. Um, even if it's very basic forms. So here, I'll, I'll show a couple more examples of, of what everybody's been doing in the class. Um, Who's here? Oh, this is Ian. Um, let me find another uh, Japan Night Alley. This one's from Eugene Chu, uh, my friend from. Uh, we used to go to CDA back in the day. But oh wait, no, this is from uh, Leonardo. Yeah, he did a really nice scene here too. He's got these low poly characters and stuff. So th this first week is all about just really, really getting used to the the normal, you know, the transformation tools, scaling, rotating, moving, um, just pushing blocks around basically and pushing cylinders around all these primitive shapes, and just throwing it all into one scene and and uh, throwing in some lights. We get into a little, a tiny bit of grease pencil here for the you know the signs and stuff and also we start to think about lighting because that's that's another big thing that we continually work on throughout the class is just lighting and compositions and trying to think of your 3d scene as a as a painting so we can set up a camera and and start to uh, sort of compose it like you're a, a movie director or, or a cinematographer so I think, yeah, Leo did a really good job here with this, this scene. It's got a lot of interesting stuff going on, a lot of action. Um, all right, let me see, where is the next one? Here's one from Coco, Liam. This is his week one. Pretty simple here, but he's got the volumetric light coming in, the, 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 uh, Soft shadows. There was some light bleeding coming in through here, but we we ended up troubleshooting that in the class. 
And that's the kind of the nice thing about having the, the classroom setting is if you have little specific problems, we can go through and figure them out. Oops. And here he's using grease pencil on the on the signs to get that text there. Let me make this uh, solid. I'll make this one rendered. And it's and the other cool thing is we <laughs> when we're reviewing homework, it's not just looking at an image. You can actually go into the the scene and float around. And there's even this uh, walkthrough mode that I'm gonna I'll, I'll bring that up in a minute. Let me see if I can. Do do. I'll bring this one in. Well, oh, this is Burbank. He got pretty happy with this, the signs here. <laughs> I like his uh, <laughs> menu. Let's see what this one is. Oh, same, same. What is this? Oh, here's another one from Burbank. Some heavy depth of field in here, and grease pencil. I do wish I, w I wish grease pencil would respect the uh, depth of field and bloom and stuff, but uh, it, it doesn't yet. Okay, he made a little city here, a very reflective street. <laughs> um, and then we've got. Uh, let me keep going here. Uh, what is this? Oh, this is Eugene's mech. I'll save that for later. All right, here is Mike, Mike Madelak. He did a lot of great work in this class. Um, Mike, I don't know if you're here, but yeah, you kicked ass here. This was Mike's week one. He's one of those guys who just like, I don't know. I think he had, you know, he spent a lot of time on these assignments and really brought them to life. Um, so they're, they're, they were always like very rich with detail and very, um, you know, it's a lot of stuff. But at the same time, this is week one. We're using very, very basic tools, just primitives, and just doing it over and over and over again. Move, move this, the, the, Get a cube, scale it up, rotate it a little bit, maybe skew it. Get a get another cube, uh, rotate it. That's a leg. Get another cube. It's so it's just repeating the same tools over and over here, just to get your muscle memory going and get used to to what you're doing without without too much distractions. Um, although I don't even know how he, I guess he's just like figured stuff out on his own too. Um, then he was replicating these bricks everywhere. A lot of people in week one had tons of, you know, re repeating patterns everywhere and their scenes were getting, you know, this is like a million polygons. But by the end of it, we, we learned how to d use collections and instancing and how to get those file sizes way down low. And and so, we you know, we can s be a little more efficient with how we duplicate things and performance can be a little better. And I think in this one, we wanted to mess around with the lighting a little. What did he have here? He had some kind of weird light. Anyway, I'll I'll keep going. Let me check the chat and see if there's any questions so far. Hello, everybody. Um, do we cover something about grease pencil? Yeah, week one we're we're doing grease pencil right here, on uh, for the, some of the signs. Um, Marina says it's cool to find great content content in Blender for concept art. Yeah, I mean, I, f I feel like Blender's really, really flexible for concept art. It's great for design. So it's definitely a great tool for any kind of concept artist. Um, specifically because of the modifier system in Blender, uh, you, can, you can have your design, you know, and modify it way down the line and, and still keep your, your history, sort of, if that makes sense. Um, let me see, where else do we have in Japan? Here we go. This is uh, Lucas Lima with his Jay and Silent Bob scene here. <laughs> and a lot of people like to put, put little creatures and cats in their scenes. 
I'm not affected by volume. Yeah. Yeah, so Grease Pencil. This is Grease Pencil. Not affected by volume. Kind of sucks, but we. I guess we could... One way to get around it is we can convert the Grease Pencil into a... Uh, into a real object. So if we go... Where is it? Select all the strokes. And then there's a convert somewhere. I should know this. <laughs> um, is it Phi Convert? Convert to Curve or Mesh? Let's try Curve. Okay. And where did it go? Let me try that again. Where did it go? Grease pencil, where are you? Well, this is not a good start, <laughs> but it's in there somewhere. We can convert these to meshes. Um, let's see, any changes to the class since Brainstorm? Uh, hey Andy, I, I think it's pretty similar. I mean, yeah, it it's it's a similar class to the brainstorm one, for sure. But um, yeah, well, uh, the only I guess the main difference is it's it's online, so uh, everything is recorded also, so you can watch stuff after the class. It's kind of a nice part about doing stuff online. Um, but yeah, the content of the course is about the same as the, the Brainstorm one. Is it important to use a custom UI or can we use a default one if we prefer? Uh, I think it is really important to use a custom UI with Blender in particular because um, the way it's set up out of the box is a, is a little bit cumbersome and sometimes things that we we need to use over and over and over and over again are either spread out into different menus or you have to complete like five steps in order to do one thing like for example setting up a camera so let me show you guys how this works in regular blender so I think normally if you want to set up a camera you go cameras and then you or here you go shift a camera and then where is that camera I have no idea where where that camera is it's over there so now you gotta move your scene to where you want the camera to be. Then you go view cameras. Um, how do you even do it? Align active camera to view. Okay, now that camera is there. And then, but that's not it. We're not done yet because if we try to render, when we try to render the image, oh, is it working? Maybe it's working. I guess they fixed that. Oh wait, no, no, no. This is a different camera. So now you have to switch this to your camera. Oh wait, what? It didn't even move that camera. See? So it's like, uh, it's a little bit cumbersome to move. You have to create the camera, then move the camera to your view, and then you have to set the scene camera to, to be your new camera. So the things like that, it takes too many steps. So um, that's why we have this little custom setup that does all this stuff automatically. Like you can go V and then say create camera at view. Boom. So there's a new camera here. It automatically set the scene to use that camera. And the camera is uh, set to the viewport. Or it's set to where we were looking at, which is what we wanted. Um, and there it is. So there's tons of little things like that, that, um, you know, it takes a couple steps using normal Blender. And honestly, I don't see any reason why it should. So those have been all kind of combined into scripts that does it for you. Um, and so I would definitely recommend using custom setup if you want to run through. I guess it, it helps you learn Blender a little bit faster, too, because you don't have to remember as many keys you don't have to remember any any you know menus and stuff uh, 
Hey Cristiano, hello everywhere. Um, do I offer some studentship? What is that? Like scholarship? Um, haven't thought about that yet, but maybe in the future. Well, we'll <laughs> I gotta get back to you on that. But that's that's a good idea um, because I have had a few people from um, you know international that are you know the dollar versus currencies and it, it's different um, so yeah I need to think about that um, hey Lucas we already uh, oh yeah we're looking at you <laughs> right now hey how um, this is an online class so I'm I'm just offering it on my own this is uh, just online I'm not going through a school this time Hey Torben. Yeah, Marina, exactly. This this whole thing is organized for you know, building stuff quickly and it makes certain things simpler. All right, let's keep going and see another here's uh Eugen's Night Alley. Eugen Chu. And I love with these scenes that they they run so f quickly too. I mean, you don't need a supercomputer to run this and it's all like, you know, it's pretty much real time and I especially love the soft shadows effect here that we're getting with the you know these lines here from from Eugene's thing so I mean we could even oop, uh oh <laughs> that happens sometimes but y you could even grab a light for example Let's, oh come on it doesn't like me grabbing that light let me try one more time. I'll I'll not touch that light this time. I'll just make a new light. All right. So let's say we have this one in here. I mean, this this whole feeling of just moving lights around is so unnatural to a, a three D artist because this is this is not possible. Like this this is not supposed to be happening at this quality at this speed. And this is all like brand new Blender um, 2.8 stuff, so it's pretty damn cool. Um, all right, so let's see. I'm gonna change my settings a little bit here. Okay. So if I turn off soft shadows, all all my shadows are really crispy, sharp. Which is great sometimes you want that look but sometimes we want to get some soft shadows so we just check that on and what it does is it jitters the shadow around randomly and that's how we get the shot soft shadows so let me turn down the radius here make it really low and you see how the soft shadows man it just works it's really this is a expensive effect usually that takes a long time to render but we're getting it here really nicely. See how it's like really sharp or, or it contacts with the floor and then it keeps blending out and blending out and blending out. It's beautiful. It's really nice. Oh, what's going on here? There we go. There was some clipping issues here. change the color here maybe make it a little bit less whoa and these sliders are crazy but man it's it's the lighters dream this uh, EV viewport mix the green in with the yellow and you get these interesting like two-tone shadows here How cool is that, man? All right, let's keep going. Who's who's next? Um, I think we already looked at this one actually. Week two. Oh, 
sorry, one second, guys. I'm looking for... There was one from Mr. Scott, I think it was. Scott, where's your... People need to learn how to rename their files. Jeez. Um, all right, well, let's keep going, I guess. I'll, I'll go to week two now. What do we got on week two? We have the tractor for week two. Well, here, I'll just show the images. Maybe that's easier. But yeah, week two, we, t we take that same idea of just using a lot of primitives and moving them around, scaling them, rotating them, manipulating them to get, get your muscle memory going. And we use that to make more complicated stuff, like a tractor. But if you think about it, I mean, it looks crazy complicated, but if you really break it down into little parts, it's still just a bunch of cylinders, a bunch of uh, boxes, rounded off boxes, cylinders, box, cylinder. The only really complicated thing or different thing is that we have uh, some a little bit of rounded, like organic shapes like this, this, uh, this engine cover, the fuel tank, and the fenders, and the seat. So that's really the only thing that's different in this week. So we go over how to create those shapes using uh, subdivision surfaces, and it's not really a big deal. It's, it's pretty easy. And then we also do some cuts here, some Boolean, live Boolean cuts, and we do some radial array, and we do some uh, a little bit. So we're we're at we're building on the last the last project and just adding a couple more tools. So here's Eugen. This is Mike Manalak. Eugen Chu. This is um, I think this is Ian Melling. Um, people gotta name their files, man. This is Hendrik. This is crazy, man. Hendrik always has the weird colors and the crazy like graphic designs. Smiley faces on the seats and stuff like that. He's nuts. Um, oh yeah, this is Elisa. Elisa's um, night alleyway from week one. Elisa's uh, tractor. This is an old uh, Italian Landini tractor. This is um, Burbank Green's tractor. Uh, he joined in the class at the last second, like the day before, <laughs> actually a couple hours before the first class. <laughs> but he ended up doing some really amazing work, so I'm I'm really glad he was he was in there. Um, yes, Mr. Burbank. This is uh, Cali Way. Elliot. Oh man, this is Hendrix week one, the the night alleyway, which he t made it into like some Mary Poppins thing. But <laughs> I love this little guy just falling down over here. This guy's blacked out. Too much sake. Um, let's see. Lloyd says, when taking the course, how much time is dedicated to coursework during its dur duration because of my job? I mean, it's like you put in as much work as you can. It's each week we do a new project, so um, yeah, you just cram in as much as you can from week to week. It it, it is nice if you have a good chunk of time um, set aside for homework. Um, so yeah, uh, but there are people that that are working. Actually, I think most of the people that take the class are working, especially at the nighttime. Uh, the nighttime class um, so they they kind of manage it, it is tough though if you're if you have a job and you're doing the class the other thing though too is that all the all the classes are recorded so if you wanted to you know look at it down the line you could totally do that too um, but yeah let's see what else, if we have any other questions um, it ain't a stream without, yep, we need at least one crash. How adept do you have to be at modeling for this class? No modeling experience, like uh, Fresh Runner says. We're starting from scratch. Um, 
So I'm not expecting any experience from you guys when you come in. Actually, it's better if you have no modeling experience because <laughs> then we can all start on the same page. Um, does a low or semi mid spec computer handle this kind of thing? I would say the, the minimum that you should have is probably a the, the main thing that matters with this is the graphics card because we're using EV, which is run. It's like a video game engine. So if let's put it like this, if you can play video games on your on your computer, then you can probably take, do, you know, do these renders. Um, so I'm talking like minimum and NVIDIA GTX uh, 1050 or 1060. And what the one I'm using in, in class is a 1070. So 1060, 1070 would be ideal, but a 1050 is fine too. And then the CPU doesn't really matter. You could have whatever. Um, is the class lifetime access? Yeah, it is lifetime. It's uh, everything is downloadable, so you can just save them on your hard drive. Um, boo boo boo. Around how much time do you think it's? Yeah, I would say in terms of hours, I don't know. I, w I would say you should be putting in at least like eight hours a week. Um, you know, you could s fit in a couple hours every night, maybe one or two hours every night, and you should be okay. But you you should be have some time to to do homework. I mean, it it doesn't really help you if you don't have time to practice. You know. Because, it, again, it's a muscle memory thing. You have to uh, repeat things a lot and you use your hands a lot. So, Is each class more a demo or more critique? Well, it's kind of half and half. The, the f first half, we usually do critique. And then the second half is demo. And the demos are usually kind of short, short and sweet. They show a technique. They show like an example of what you need to complete the assignment. And then basically people go on and do whatever they need. They kind of like go off on their own tangent and like make the assignment their own, which is sort of cool. Like this, the demo for this scene did not include like umbrellas and people and trucks and stuff, but it showed the tools that you can use to, to make that stuff. So Leo, in this case, he just kind of took the tools and ran with them and made his own thing. So then that's what kind of how I try to structure the class. It's like I'm giving you a couple tools and you you it's it's kind of like Lego blocks that you can play with and then you have to go and build and, and figure it out a little bit on your own. It, so I don't want to be like I'm, I'm not telling you step by step by step how to do every single little thing here like this pattern here he, Manu created this pattern on his own. And these patterns on the walls he created on his own. Uh, but what I did give in this in this week was the format and the structure of how to how to um, set this up so you have the instancing and you have all the radial array and so you have the sort of the skeleton of what you need and then you can go in and sort of make it make it how you want to make it and sort of play with it. So I'm, I'm trying to make like a, a sandbox that you can play with um, so you can sort of figure out things on your own. Um, so yeah, like this week right here is this the sci-fi corridor. And then Omar here, he did a totally different version of the sci-fi corridor. But, you know, he he knows the tools. He, he knows how to set it up. So, But he went a totally different direction. So that's the cool thing about it. Everybody can sort of make their own take on it and you start to see people's sort of personality come through sometimes like some some of the students already have a, a sort of a style that they consistently bring throughout the weeks yeah this is Scott Maynard he did this crazy ass scene I wish I could find it because it's really fun to to walk through this scene anyway um and then we also do a, a cow Yokoyama mech in one week. This one's pretty fun. Um, let me see if I can. Do, 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 do. 
Yeah, this is Coco's mech. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty cool. We get into a little bit of texturing too, some um, um, procedural texturing to get like dirt and grunge and stuff without any UVs actually. So this is a really fast and lazy way to texture that looks really cool too. Uh, I don't know if who who got it. Oh, this is Ian. I like his uh, work on the hands here. It's really nice. This is Mike uh, Manilak. He did a. Uh, I I thought that this mech sort of reminds me of Overwatch, or it looks like Blizzard to me, for some reason. Just the aesthetic of it. But I really like how this one came out. And he he ended up bringing in these clouds from. Uh, th these clouds are actually in the scene, so if you're in this scene, you can rotate 360. Let me. Let me see if I can open it. Mike, where are you? So here's Mike's scene. And check it out. It's I thought that he was, you know, doing Photoshop and compositing the backgrounds and stuff, but Look at that. It's actually there. I mean, the, it's a little bit, you know, you see the illusion when you zoom out. But the other cool thing about this is the, these clouds are not individually painted in these colors. They're actually reacting to the light properly. So let me find that light if I can. Where the hell are you? Here. So he's got a sunlight here. Oops. Check it out. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Let's see if we can change. This is just nuts, man. Um, let's look at Mike's corridor. Wait, he, oh, Mike did a crazy ass corridor. Let me see if this will open. Some of the files started to get a little bit ridiculous in size, but it's okay. Some some of these people have like uh, super computers, man. I I couldn't even keep up with their computers there. Yeah, this this file is taking. All right, um, Kabir says, learning a lot from your Gumroad tutorials. Do you go over the same techniques in your online class? Yeah, there there are a, there is a lot of overlap actually. So if you do all the Gumroads, you you should have an idea of how to do most of this stuff. But it is there is some difference. There, I mean, the projects are for the most part different, except for the Sci-Fi Corridor. Each other, every other project is different. And the other, I mean, we cover a little bit of particles, some hair, some uh, sculpting, some grease pencils. So it's a little bit more, I guess, we, we poke into every little section of Blender, I guess. And the other difference, too, is the, um, the homework review every week. And we also kind of have a, a chat going on, ongoing that where we can ask questions and you know get feedback and stuff and actually a lot of the students end up helping each other too in the in the chat so we we basically have a a Skype chat that continues a continuous Skype chat throughout the whole term where we post our work we um, do our meetings and we we post our files so everything is there in one spot and people can post questions um, throughout the week I'll try to answer any questions and also sometimes I'll do a little video responses if if it's like a tiny thing that I don't feel like typing out I'll just record a little video to to answer it um, 
Does it require to be live at some point or everything can be watched later? I always try to present, be present, but time zones and freelance life, who knows? Yeah, everything is recorded. So you, you could theoretically watch, watch every week after the, the live class and do the homework. And if you post the homework, in, um, I'll be able to review it for the next uh, live session. So yeah, it's possible to do that. Although it would be nice if you're you're live. Um, all right, let me see if we can get in here. So Mike, I think he set up a bunch of different cameras here with some really interesting lighting too. That's the other thing we're f we are focused on throughout the term is just lighting trying to get these nice cinematic compositions and uh, paying attention to that that kind of stuff. The cool thing with lighting is you can you can kind of hide stuff in shadows if you don't feel comfortable with it. Or if you if you do want to show off your details, you can just stick a light there. clip here is too long which means the shadows are clipping away this needs to be all the way here this needs to be all the way here there's all these silly light settings that we gotta we, we go through all that stuff in class but it's kind of annoying so anyway here we go let's make this a little bit dimmer maybe so you can really just subtly hint at your at your details. I mean, he has so much cool stuff in here. It would, would be great to see it. At least just a little bit. You don't have to like, you know, show it all. But it's nice to hide and show and have little gradients and have some mystery and stuff peeking out. Yeah, but Mike, Mike is one of those very de detail oriented guys. He's he always had um all his scenes are pretty heavy <laughs> let me turn off the soft shadows but oh man look at th the soft shadows actually work with volume too which is <laughs> kind of crazy they like all this fog is getting these soft shadows too so let me turn off the soft shadows for a second I'm using a control shift V here. Bring up this pop up. Okay, here we are. Let's see what happens if we change the volume settings. Try like double the thickness. Make it super thick. Let's see. We can adjust the uh, the resolution of the fog here under the render settings. Let's bring this down low. So now these shadows are getting a little bit sharper. Man. All right, and then the other cool thing about these homework scenes is we can just jump right into them. So if I go shift tilde, now we're in a first person mode and we can just walk right through it. Let me turn off the fog here for a second. Okay, shift, shift tilde. I can just walk through this scene. And you, if you notice on the bottom, there's all these settings for our tool, our current tool. So there's like V is jump, spacebar is teleport. So let me teleport over here, spacebar. Oops. And then what other cool things? There, there's gravity. So if I press G, now I have gravity. That means I can just actually walk around like I'm in a little video game. Pretty cool, right? And you kind of get to appreciate all this detail. Anyway, so that's Mike. Uh, 
I just realized the fog is super high quality non-stop when in play mode with space. The fog doesn't flick like this. Hmm. Are you going to offer it throughout the year? Yeah, I'm going to keep doing this, I think, throughout the year. Or as long as I can. Um, hey, Ariel. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to have you in there. Um, let's see. Who, let's look at... Uh, all right, this is actually from yesterday from Lucas. Um, he did a really... Really nice job on his final project here. Let's just take a look. Come on. All right. So this is a scene or a, a vehicle that's um, he modeled after John Fry's concept. Let's see if we can find it here. And we are all big fans of John Fry in, in our class. And if you guys don't know John Fry, this is his work. And so he he has all these crazy, crazy vehicle designs. Um, all of them are great candidates for modeling, actually. So I don't know. Maybe I should ask him if we can do a a class project based on his his designs. That would be awesome. Um, that would be really cool, actually. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask him. But yeah. So Lucas did a really good job on this thing. Got all the details in here. That roughness. This part's pretty challenging. Kind of smashed it all together. And the textures are looking, coming together. Not sure about this, what's going on maybe he's got some more this is under construction here but yeah I mean you get lost in these details it ends up kind of being fun you know it's it's sort of like a meditative state when you just like keep going keep digging keep cutting keep tweaking and it ends up being kind of fun. Let me sort these by date. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see. Oh man, I forgot to uh, ask, um, save the images of this one. This is a uh, Hendrix Mech from week, um, I think this is week five. But yeah, this is when we're, we're getting into procedural textures. <laughs> and I love how these, uh, got these guys have nipples here, and the belly button. Did a really good job on, on the water too, or the tea. Um, yeah, Hendrick has all the craziest shapes, craziest colors. The teapot's even saying hello to us. Um, all right, so the teapot here is actually a procedural texture, which means we can adjust it like this. We can, we can change the scale of it. We could even flip that flip those colors backwards you could add in extra colors make it let's see let's make it go from you know make a fade here it's crazy the the procedural textures is so powerful so flexible and um, I feel like they don't get used enough but hopefully hopefully um, yeah, look at that. It's it's so cool. Uh, just move these around. Let's get on. Let's search for a noise in here. Stick it on there. See what happens. There you go. 
Let's throw a uh, hue saturation and see what we can do. We could even animate these things and make the texture like blink or change or do crazy stuff. Anyway, yeah. Let's see if there's anything else I missed here. Got a Jaguar from Coco. This is our, our week seven, uh, week six project, the Jaguar, which is just a nice, easy exercise to get into subdivision surfaces. So uh, try to get some, these classic cars are really soft and round. So they, they work really nicely with uh, subdivision and it's a pretty fun project. This is week five from Jung. The uh, Kao Yokoyama mech. So yeah, I, we try to do fun projects and cover a lot of ground and just have fun with it. Oh yeah, the submarine. We didn't even look at the submarines. So we do a little bit of particles also with the submarine project. And we actually try to create a little uh oh, this is a big <laughs> file. All right, let me check the check the chat. See what everybody's saying. This um, the teapot mech is by Hen Hendrik Visser, um, and that's Hendrik. Here, I'll just type it in. He's a Dutch guy from the land of Blender. Yeah, this is, um, who is this? God damn it, guys. You got to name your files. If people are asking what your name is and they want to hire you or whatever. Come on. Who is this? Shit. Is this Ian? This might be Ian. I'm going to say it's Ian, although I'm not 100% sure. Um... Let me keep looking at uh, if there's any other. All right. Well, here's Hendrix's uh, submarine. Come on. He put a billion fish in here. Let me see if it. But yeah. So we got we set up a little um, simulation here with the fish, and then we have our little deep sea exploration vessel. Get in here, and of course he's got a disco ball <laughs> and bar stools. <laughs> oh man! And then there's like a propeller blade inside the cabin. So <laughs> I don't know why. Why? Isn't that dangerous? Um. <laughs> oh, okay, I see. So this is like the front pod that attaches to this pod. I, I totally didn't get that, but now I understand. <laughs> but still, that's pretty dangerous to have people like right in front of them. Um, anyway, so this is Hendrik. And these are all little mini subs. Very cute. And then, uh, I don't know what this is. I guess this is the relic that they're trying to collect. The relic of power. And then, who is this? This is Omar. Week three. Come on, Omar. Oh, shit. This one's crazy. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> Ooh, we got our fishies and this uh, pretty creepy guy here. Anglerfish. The world's biggest anglerfish here. Yeah. 
And we got a little chunky submarine in there. So yeah, we have fun with these projects. Um, this project also goes into a little bit of displacement for the seabed and, and some grass. I don't know if this grass is moving. No, I don't think it's moving. Burbank did a pretty cool scene on week three. Um, that was, it was like floating. He had his grass swaying in the, in the current. Where's Burbank? Oh man, I need, this is so hard to find files because nobody names their shit. Um, Well, I'll show Bur Burbank's uh, movie. He, he made a little movie uh, of his mech, which is kind of cool. Well, he combined the, the sci-fi corridor with the mech and had a little animation there. That's the other cool thing about EV is we can render out these animations pretty easily. Even on a shitty laptop or whatever, you can, you can do this. Um, all right. Cool, I've been talking a lot here, guys, so I let me know if you have any questions about the class. Again, we are starting at, um, what are we starting? We're, we're starting March 5th. There's one class for the midday, which is on March 5th. It's at um, 12, it's at noon um, Pacific time. And then there's another class session that's happening at March 7th. And that's at night. That's 7.30 p.m. PST. So check out uh, the link below. Um, there's a syllabus link. Let me just bring it up for you guys. So this is in the, in the description. And it just has a lot of details about the class. What's going to happen. Th these are the people that are in there so far. And if this stuff looks interesting, you want to learn some Blender, want to do some concepting, then uh, check this out. And here's an overview of the weekly projects and some of the past work that, that people have done. All right. Can you teach us how to name? <laughs> yes, you just <laughs> rename your file. Actually, what, what would be the best way to name? Maybe the name first. Like you put your name first and then you put the name of the project, like, like, uh, Mike Manilak, um, Japan Night Alley, Hendrik Visser, Tractor, something like that. I need to, uh, I should, actually, it's kind of my fault, because I didn't really tell them to name it in a specific format. So, yeah, name first, and then your project. That's how we should do it. I wonder if I could find Burbank's project because it was really cool damn it oh yeah let me know if you have any questions in the chat I hope this was helpful I'm trying to I tried to give uh, as complete of an overview as possible here um, this is a losing battle here where is Burbank he did a movie of uh, he did this, this really cool little like short mini short film on week three of of the uh, the the oh, shit. Lucas also did a nice video too. Damn it, I can't find it right now. All right, guys. Well, anyway, but you can you can bug Burbank ask him to show show you his projects all right guys i guess that's it um thanks for tuning in and i hope this was helpful i'll see you guys uh in the future or i hope i'll see you in class thanks have a good day <laughs>